So I am going to talk purely on the femoral stem side. So if you look at the uh, Chanli's hip replacement, we all know there was only one option, that is a cemented stem and a cup, po me, po cemented cup and a 22.2 mm metal head. Nothing else was there. So everybody were doing THR with this, but you will see that the results were good at that time. But now we have too many choices, so many implants. So the options are so much. So what is that? We need to know the implant in and out. That is the only option we have. <laughs> Unless you know that, then it is very difficult. So we coming to a hip replacement, uncemented, cemented, hybrid, reverse hybrid. These are the four you have. Out of this, you have to perform one. So which to perform? So that you, for that you need to also know the literature, what and why, how it is being done and what is the latest uh, literature available. If you look at this NJR, the hybrid is going up. So what is hybrid? Uncemented cup and a cemented stem. If it is the other way around, it is the reverse hybrid. So everybody will think, okay, uncemented is the one. But in NHS, <coughs> it is hybrid is the one which is going. Uncemented, yes. Cemented, it, they were doing ups and downs always. But still, cemented is also. Look at the next important thing, the bearing surface. Again, this also matters to select the implant. So the ceramic on poly is that now the trend, even whether it is a cemented or uncemented, even whether you are doing a 32 or a 36, a ceramic on poly has been proven and it is well documented. Metal on poly, not bad, but always when you are putting a small head, choose you can choose a metal on poly, but if you are going for a metal uh, higher heads like 32 or 36, I always prefer a ceramic. So don't think or bring in cost as a factor here. Nowadays, the cost has come down so much, don't hesitate to add that extra 8,000 for a ceramic head. So bigger heads always put a ceramic. Ceramic on ceramic, almost it is gone down so much. Availability, the technique wise, so many varied reports. To start with, for youngsters, stick on with ceramic on highly cross-linked poly. So that is what. So coming to the cementless fixation, the most important thing is osteointegration. If this is achieved, your success there and your longevity is going to be there. So what is that prevents that osteointegration? Two things. One is the fibrous tissue and the micro motion. Always make sure there is less, very, very less micro motion, almost nil, no micro motion. If there is there, then the failure rates are very high. So four important factors in selecting an implant. Implant design and what is the coating? You need to know that coating. Primary stability is important and patient's bone quality. These are the four things will give you the longevity. So your best option should that implant should handle all the four factors. Very, very important. So you need to know the design. So for that uncemented stem, Sahil explained very well about the importance of vertical offset, horizontal offset and the angle. These three are very, very important. That angle is so important. We might not notice regularly, but always make sure you know that what angle. So the design, geometry, coating and length of that implant. All these four is very important for you to select. This is a very good classification. If you have not gone through this, please go through that. Very, very good classification and it will give you a very good overview about that implants. So the, this one very neatly, classif very neatly classifies the uh, implants available. So I will explain to you. So type 1, type 1 is always short and ultra short stems. In that 1A, B, C is there. 1A, B, C is there. And this 1A, B, C are very, very short stem, very, very short stems. It is mainly for bone preservation, but the usage has come down so much. Technique wise also challenging and the neck retaining processes has got very high revision rate. So coming to the 1D, this is a short and a tapered stem. The recently launched Actus, Corail Actus Total Hip System comes under this type 1D shortened stem. It's a very good, particularly if you are doing an anterior approach, this system is very good. So it has got some design specific uh, speciality in that. What is that? It is a fit and fill stem and particularly it has got a triple tapered, medial collar is there and a dual coating is there. So what is the dual coating? A porous, proximal porous coating is there. Apart from that, you add some HA coating. It is not 
available in other stems. This is a very special coating that is Diofix and also it is a bone preserving form um, technique. So, this is type 1D that is a short end. The next one is type 2. Listen carefully that this type 2 stem is the most commonly used in our uh, scenario. Type 2 is a single wedge. What is that single wedge? It gets fixation in only in one plane, medial to lateral, not in anteroposterior. So, it is medial to lateral, not in anteroposterior. So, it is flat and thin in the AP plane, conventional single wedge processes. What are the examples? Stryker Akle 2 and Zimmer ML Taper. These are the two single wedge type 2 stem. Type 3, what is that? It is a double wedge. Type 3 is double wedge stem. It has got both fixation in AP and mediolateral. For that, you have to have a distal reaming. So, what is this? You are, it is a proximal surface porous coating, double wedged, triple tapered, distally grid blasted, proximally highly porous coating. So, this is type 3. What are the examples? Synergy stem from Smith & Nephew and a summit stem from um, Depew. What is that? The offset is low in this stems. When compared to the coral stems, which is the offset is very, very high. So, this for to put this stem, you need to distally ream a little bit and then proximally broach. But in a type 2, in these kind of stems, you do not need to ream distally. It is only a broaching. So, broaching only in type 2 and distal reaming and <coughs> broaching in type 3 stems. Type 4, not used very commonly nowadays. 4A is tapered round and 4B is tapered rectangle, not commonly used. So, you need not worry. Type 5, again AB, remember this type 5A is tapered in the distal, it is a single solid titanium stems with the splines, that is the Zimmer cone, the small one, Zimmer cone, Wagner cone, but it is not the regular one, distal loading. This is also distal loading, but it is a short one, you can rotate it as per you want, uh, but particularly in a complex cases where you want to rotate the version. Type 5 is a cylindrically fully coated type 5B solution stem, but not used nowadays, better not avoid, to avoid this stem, lot of failures, type pain, it is a coating is different fully, it is a co uh, cobalt chrome coating. Type 6, again AB, again this is not used nowadays very much, it, the neck is modular, the original, it's original stem itself has got some modularity in the neck. It is not the trial alone, the stem also has got. The other, now what we use regularly here, um, uh, Anil mentioned about the various offset, the trial only you have that option, but the original stems comes as a single piece, but here it has got the original also. So, 6B is modular body. So, this is what modular neck, but this one is modular body, this is 6B. This is what SROM, again in complex cases, the body is modular, the previous one is neck is modular, this is mod body is modular, only SROM has got that option. Type 7 is anatomical and curved and fit and fill stem, again there are a lot of failures, varied reports, we do not need this much. So, our always our go to stems are type 2 and type 3 in a primary situation, type 5 in a complex primary situation, type 6 again modular body, that is all. The rest. If you are using a short stem, it is 1D. These are the four types which. So, now you know about what type it is. This is the most commonly used. Everybody will know this type, uh, door type A, B, C. But still, you should know that calcar canal ratio. The calcar width, in you have to measure 10 centimeters down. You have to measure the uh, canal width. The ratio, remember this, if it is 0 to 0 0.5, it is type A. It is not because it has got some variations between this. Here it might say type A, but clinically uh, x-ray wise it might be type B. So, better to measure this type A is 0 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 it is type B and 0.75 type C. So, initially it will look little complex, but once you start measuring, when you do templating, this will come in very handy. So, based on that you have to modify your technique. What is that? See, this is door type A. So, what immediately to go to stem should be a type 2 stem, that is a single wedge, just you broach pros proximally and do this. This is the post operative x-ray. Type 2, single wedge stem. Remember, it is only in the medial lateral plane fixation. Type 2, one more example, door type A. Again, this single wedge stem, yeah, this is an ML taper. 
dark type A, again 59 years old male. Here see that this is a type 3 stem I have used. That is double wedged metaphyseal filling synergy stem. Remo Just few more, sorry. Remember that this has got a low offset when compared to a coral, this type 3 stems, uncemented. One more example of synergy stem. But look at the literature, these type 3 stems are surviving very well, proximally porous coated distally. But the key point here is the stem is little longer when compared to the type 2 stems. So, but the results are excellent. The removal is very difficult in these kind of stems, synergy and the uh, summit stems. One more example, see that how the uh, neck has gone inside, it is like a stiff hip. So, in this you need a low offset, like as Anil said, either you need a low coral low offset stem or these kind of summit stems where the offset is low, coating is good and good uh, literature uh, longevity is reported. See 97% to 100% literature. So, but remember this, when you are doing these kind of dark type A cases, now if you are using a type 2 stems, the chances of periprosthetic fractures are very, very high. So, look at this, preoperatively you have to do a proper templating and a full x-rays. Femur is bowing so much, both the sides patient had a periprosthetic fracture but doing well. But to conclude here, in regards to this, periprosthetic fractures are very common in dark type A than in dark type B. Remember this always. So, when you are selecting a type 2 stem in a dark type A, the chances of periprosthetic fracture are very high. What to do then? Convert the dark type A to type B. So, how to do that? Ream distally and make little wider and put in a stem, uncemented stem where the chances of periprosthetic fractures are very, very low. So, if you are doing an uncemented, convert dark type A to type B and then select the appropriate stem based on the offset. Type 2 and type 3 are low offsets, type squirrel stems are high offsets. So, this is again another example. See, tor type B, I have used a regular type 2 wedge, uh, type 2 stem and both sides. It is just a 28 head, pinnacle cup, highly crosslink poly, patient is doing well, both sides. So, coming to the coral, which is very commonly done, the coral classification is little, uh, it does not fit into exactly into the classification. So, because the design is little different, double wedged, fully HA coated, remember that fully HA coated you have to be very careful in the preparation. It has to be a rigid fixation, good sizing has to be achieved because the HA delaminates very easily.